Hello folks, the purpose of this tech note is to explain how to use an ESP to upload data to ThingSpeak. First of all, what is ThingSpeak? It's a free to use development uh, service for Internet of Things. So it's a storage service. Enables you to take sensor data, uh, read it by a controller, typically an ESP32 or an 8266 or Arduino. Upload that sensor data to the ThingSpeak cloud service or server and then subsequently graph your data and include it on your own web page or read the graphs on the ThingSpeak server. So how do we go about doing all this? Well there's the outline of the process I'm going to go through. First thing to do is create a ThingSpeak account go to thingspeak.com, log on successfully and go to your channels and I've got some channels already set up but we'll create a new one now so let's create a channel so start a new channel give the channel a name I'm going to call it test channel I'm going to add in some fields the first field I'll call that pressure anything you want really it doesn't mean anything it's, ju it's just a label uh, next one I'll call temperature and then a, a third final example one you can have up to uh, eight is uh, humidity and press save and that's the channel created there's the graphs already produced ready to receive data from your um, from your controller next thing we need to do is go to the API keys tab and get a copy of the API key write key so you need this key to be able to write data in add that key to the source code and paste it in so I've given two examples on github of the ESP32 or a um, ESP8266 so write that key in and uh, that's all you need the source code and we'll do the rest for you compile and upload it and uh, test it and when you go back to your channels now you'll see the new channel if you go to the public view part you'll see it's not visible but if you click on sharing and click on make it public go back to the channel there's the data that's now being uploaded and obviously if that's coming from a real sensor um, it will mimic the environment that's being monitored um, so if you watch carefully you can see the data there it is just added um, up updating every um, 20 seconds 15 seconds is the maximum roof uh, update rate The next thing I want to show you is how to embed data into a web page. There's a balloon icon on top of each graph which gives you a um, inline frame hypertext HTML coding. And here I've embedded it into my web page so you can go visit my web page and see that live data of pressure, temperature and humidity coming from an ESP32 in deep sleep and if you hover over a data item it'll give you the time and the value uh, so there it is a practical application in terms of um, testing and using when the code runs if you were to use the serial port that's the output you would see there's a few diagnostic prints in the source code but the important thing is that that's the format field 1, 2 and 3, 4, 5 and 6 that the data has to be in to match the API the thingspeak.com API um, and that's the, early, the white text is the uh, controller's diagnostic there in the source code in terms of walkthrough there is the, um, the right key and I'll leave that key publicly available so you can try it out for yourself so all you need is an ESP32 or a 8266 
Remember there's a link required on the 8266 and you can try it out for yourself using my channel there and the public view I'll put in the notes below. Um, so that's quite handy. I set it to 0.33 which is 20 second update rate. Um, there is how you build the string. There's many different ways you can do that but for the moment I've just put two, three floating point uh, examples. Ideally that would float temperature would equal BME dot read temperature. Uh, float humidity would be read um, humidity and so on. Where I'm highlighting is the ampersand is required as a field separator and it is literally as it is there so that's in accordance with the API. Um, you don't have to have strings uh, you could put any other data you like You'll never get to the to the loop section of a, of the Arduino code section. It will only run through setup and go to sleep. Um, there's the final se section of the code that's actually making the connection to the ThingSpeak server, um, making an HTML connection, negotiating the protocol, and then uploading the data length, um, and then the data itself, and then it goes stop the server and goes back to sleep. In sleep mode it takes about 20 micro amps um, so it's very efficient. Uh, for the node MC ESP32, node MCU ESP32 don't need to make a link but for the two ESP8266 versions a link between D0 or GPIO16 and reset is required and that's what I'm highlighting there. That's it folks, enjoy I hope you find it useful.